This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. Hey, it's Alex, and this, of course, is called The Ramble, and we're going until midnight tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, the face you see in front of you is Stephen Kravitz. You may have seen him in such movies as, take it, as <laughs> Peggy Sue Got Married, um, uh, oh, Howard the Duck. You were in Howard the Duck. I forgot you were in Howard the Duck. You were probably, that was your first movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and and so you were probably really thrilled. Oh, yeah. To get Howard the Duck, and all you're doing is, aren't you, do you even have a line, or? Yeah, I have, I I forget what the line is, but I have a line. Yeah, it's in the very beginning of the picture, and you're in a alleyway making out with a girl, right? Right. 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 It's when the duck first comes to Earth. Yes. When it bursts through. Yeah. That was really a bad picture. <laughs> yes, it was. And there was other New York, uh, other San Franciscans in there. Uh, uh, Monty Hoffman was in oh, it. Was that right? He was in it. Who else was in it? A couple other people. Yeah. Yeah. They made a big mistake with that picture. I always like to talk about that as being one of the biggest mistakes ever. Is that you know um, a, about a year later I think uh, Who Killed Roger Rabbit came out right with an animated rabbit right right a lot of animated characters too but you see the thing about Howard the Duck in the comics he was a Marvel comic in case people don't remember this he he was a cartoon duck in a very real world that was the right. that was the premise of the of the of the comic book and so. Rather than animate the duck, they, you know, did you ever work with the duck himself? No. It was a guy in a duck costume. Never saw it. Yeah. And I tell <laughs> Never saw it. I like to tell the story that they, they, uh, uh, they came to me and they said, listen, we want to do a, a big scene for the picture. It was actually the ending of the picture at the Warfield Theater, and we need a bunch of people there to be the audience. Right. So uh, could you use your show to get people to go over there like at 10 o'clock on, on Wednesday and, right. and sit for a couple hours to be the audience in a movie? And I said, well, I can plug it like crazy and let's see what happens. Right. And I plugged it like crazy and after it Did went, they pay you? Did they pay you to plug it? No, I was just being a nice guy. Just being a nice guy. So I, uh, but I was invited to come over and watch them film it. So after my show at 10 o'clock, I went over and sure enough, we filled the place. Right. Oh, was, really? Yeah. At least the bottom floor, which was all we needed to fill. Right. And um, um, so I'm standing there watching them. They're, they're getting ready and so on. And they got this guy on stage in a duck suit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I and I look over at the guy next to me who is the the uh, big mucky muck from Lucasfilm, uh, who says I said to him, uh, by the way, that guy who's in the duck suit, that's just a place marker, right? You're gonna you're gonna then animate the duck over the right, live right, duck, right, right? right? And he said, no, that's the duck. And I looked over at him and I said, you're in a lot of trouble. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And he kind of gave me a look like, well, I'm not exactly going to disagree with you. Right. But they thought the idea of putting a person in a duck suit was a good idea. And they had the technology. In fact, it was uh, Lucas and Industrial Light and Magic who did the, uh, did the animation work and all the, the special effects work on Who Killed Roger Rabbit. Is that right? So they had the technology in the house to be able to do it as an animated duck, but they didn't do it. So you got this guy waddling around in a duck suit. Just really ridiculous. Right. Yeah. But So that was your first movie. But you've never seen it. No. 
No. Okay. Because that's interesting. Because one of the biggest flops of all time that you were in, not even right. you went to go see. <laughs> <laughs> well, you probably figured, hey, I got this is great. My first movie, and I'm working for Lucas, right? Right. This is Mr. Star Wars. Right. No. Mm mm. Oh, terrible movie. Terrible movie. <laughs> I'm in Howard the Duck. <laughs> and you had, uh, what was his name? Robbins? What's the actor's name? Uh, Robbins. I uh, can't try to remember his first name. Um, but he was a star of the film. And I'm trying to remember who the woman was in it. So it was it had it had all the credentials to be a great film, right? And it was a terrible film, you know. And I don't think anybody's tried to remake Howard the Duck, even with the Marvel fortunes these days. No, but in Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah. have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's Howard the Duck makes a cameo in that. Does he really? I don't remember. A guy in a suit? Yeah. <laughs> really? A guy in a suit. I really I gotta go back you mean the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Right, at the end of the movie. Not the end. They're they're dealing with a guy called the Collector. Mm hmm I think it's about maybe three quarters of the way through. Mm hmm And and in that scene is Howard the Duck. Right. Is it the it's same? Not. Well, you wouldn't know if it was the same duck suit because you never saw the movie. Right, right. But I, I, I knew it was Howard the Duck. <laughs> oh, man. That, 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 that's a good joke. That's a good joke. Um, so then, and then how long was it between that and when you did uh, Clint Eastwood's film, Sudden Impact? Not long. Not long. Not long at all. You probably went, after doing Lucas and then doing that, you probably went, whoop de doo I'm on my way in the movies. Well, I was really concentrating on stand-up in those days. Really? And you were just doing the movie thing as like, here's some extra bucks coming in. Right, right, exactly. But didn't you always want to be an actor? or was, was, was Yes. Stand-up wasn't your first love, was it? No, exactly. So why were you, I guess... Things were going good in the stand-up, so the, right. you didn't want to exactly give that up, you know. Right. You had been in the, you were in the comedy competition. If I remember, came in fourth. I remember you came in fourth because that I was voting, wasn't I? I don't know. I was one of the judges. Maybe was it that year I was a judge? Was Sinbad he, won. It, it was no. The, Sinbad oh, won. Oh, the year that I was a judge. Warren Thomas won. That was the year after it. Yeah, yeah. That was the year after because yeah. Warren got sick or got knocked out in the semifinals. Yeah. The, the year that I got into the finals. Really? Yeah, Warren didn't get out of the semifinals. Well, then it must have been the next year. Right, I, I know it was the next and, year. And the producers of the show were always bugging me to be a judge. Because I was Mr. Comedy, I guess, you know. Right, 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 right. Yeah, they, right. They're always bugging me to be a judge, and I always turned it down. And I turned it down, I said, because I know too many of these guys. I don't want to have to sit in judgment over them. Right. Well, this one year, for one reason or another, they just kept nagging me and nagging me and nagging me until finally I said, okay, I'll judge the finals of the comedy competition. Right. So I'm there, and I remember I'm there with my ex-girlfriend, Xanthi, and sitting on one side of me, and the other side of me is uh, my friend Rick Sheckman from The Letterman Show. And he's out visiting. So uh, I had him sitting on the other side, and I said to both of them now, I said, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to vote. You look at who I'm voting for and how I'm voting for them. And if you disagree, let me know, because I don't think I can actually be completely objective here. Right, because, right, right. Because I know some of these guys, I love them. Other guys that are here, I hate, you know. Right. And I want you to tell me if you agree or disagree with me. So, right. So actually we had three people voting, not one. All right? Okay. So I, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, a, what's his name, a guy by the name of Frank Olivier or something who does 
who maybe that was another situation who was like a juggler. Right, a right, right. Juggler. Frank Olivier, he's a juggler. Yeah, yeah I gave Frank Olivier zero. And, oh, because he's not doing stand up. Well, yeah, somebody asked me, why'd you give him zero? He was so good. I said, yeah, but I voted on his stand up, not on his juggling. Right. Right. But anyway. So I'm sitting there, I'm voting for all these people, and uh, it, 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 uh, it's now, maybe, was it between, maybe Rick Reynolds? And, no, who was, the, who was the other person that was there that was coming out on top? Uh, but anyway, I voted uh, when I voted for Warren. I gave him full points, he was terrific. He was, he, he, I felt no guilt in that. And they agreed with me, my two friends. Right. Who were with me, agreed with me. And then I, uh, you know, I gave everybody else what I could. I think Stephen Pearl was in that. Uh, no, Pearl was the one I did. The one you did. Okay, then well, who else was in there that year? But there were people I knew. And I, I you know, I gave them fr fairly good numbers, you know. And fi finally, it, it was an average of two nights. Okay. Right. Uh, there was uh, judging one night where I wasn't there, and there was judging another night, and then they would take the mean average between the two and decide who the winner is. Right. One night the crowd, when I did it, one night the crowd got the vote. I think maybe there was some voting on that level, too. But anyway, uh, Warren didn't come in first either night. But there were two other people and they alternated back and forth, and because of that, it pushed Warren into first place. Oh, okay. Okay, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. In other words, it was a mean average, so if if Warren won second both nights, and these other guys have won first and third alternating two nights, right. Warren became number one, and, right. he, and he won the comedy competition. Well, the worst comes to worst. I'm suddenly accused of fixing the comedy competition. Yeah, I had nothing to no. do with it. It was a mean average. But I got, uh, oh, Alex Bennett, see, you had him in there. He fixed it. No, I didn't. Right. You know, I had two people here keeping me honest. So I, I never, I never, uh, I never did it again, and I don't think they ever asked me back. Actually, to be honest with you, I, 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 I judged the finals one year. Yeah, it was just one night. Didn't you feel it was kind of sad what the competition had become? Yeah, but didn't you also feel that it was wrong of you to judge other comics? Yeah, you know that that number one. I don't like any of them. Well, I mean, these people are fighting for their careers. Right, and I don't like any of them. And you didn't like any of them, right. No. Now, was that you didn't like them personally or didn't like what they I did? I just didn't like them. Oh, I yeah. just didn't like them. Do you remember who they were? No, not a clue. Really? Oh, okay. Not a clue. Couldn't even tell you who won. Because I, I don't, you know, I, I'm never, uh, I just don't, I don't like being a judge of somebody else's talent. Right. You know, I, um, because I, you know, I'm in show business myself, so I know what it's like to be judged. Right. You know, and um, and there are all kinds of things. Like in my life, there's still stuff where I'm being asked to compete. A couple of years ago, I got nominated for the radio, National Radio Hall uh, of Fame. I remember. Yeah. And I hated that. I just hated that. I hated being part of a contest because that's really right. what it was. Right. You know, and uh, uh, I didn't win. In fact, two guys from Philadelphia won who I never heard of in my life. Right. You know, who I'm sure that, yes, I'm sure they're wonderful and funny and people in Philadelphia listen to them every morning. Uh, but they could gin up the vote too with them and ask them to vote. I had nobody except my you know, flimsy little internet audience to ask right. to vote for me. So these guys win and I'm going, you know, I mean, isn't this the Broadcasting Hall of Fame? Shouldn't you have done something to advance the art in order right. to somehow right, make right, it? Right. And I feel I did that in my life. You know, right. I, I, I consistently have 
have done everything I could to bend and twist the medium and make it different than it would normally be, you know. Right. And uh, I'll, I'll, here I am now up against these two doofuses who win. And I'm going, you know, the other person with me in that, well, there were a couple other people, but the other person who of significance was Sally Jesse Raphael, who had done radio for quite a while. That's how she started out. Oh, I didn't know that. And uh, I felt that it, people said to me, how do you feel about it? And I said, well, if anybody wins, it should be Sally. Right. You know, uh, she's been in this business a long time. She's 88 years old. She ain't going to live much longer. We should honor her at this point in right. her life. Right? Right. Now, it's these two doofuses from down in Philadelphia. It made no sense at all. It made no sense at all. And that's why I hate that sort of thing. I don't like the fact that, like, we got the had Academy Awards coming up. How, how do you decide what the best movie of the year was? Well, Screen Actors Guild, you know, the Screen Actors well, Guild. Well, I, I, I just voted. I just voted, yeah. Did you get all the DVDs? Yeah, I get the DVDs. I also got it online, too, a lot of those films. Oh, I didn't, I didn't get it online. I haven't got my ballot yet. It, but I got, I got. Wait, your ballot's online. No, they'll send it to me. Like, they sent me DVDs. What, they'll send you the ballot? The, I don't think the ballot is sent by mail anymore. I think you actually have to go to SAG-AFTRA Awards online and vote there. Well. Anyway, what movies did you get this year? Show them what, the, what screeners look like. This, this is a... Well, I got The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Yeah, that's for TV. Like, six episodes of that. Yeah. Let me see. Blackbird. Yeah, that no was, idea. That, what that was that's a, that about. was another series. A very good another, series. Yeah. Another series. Yeah. The English. Another series. Oh, okay, so what you got? What you've gotten are basically TV movies, a TV right. series, but you didn't get the movies. No. Yeah. Well, no. See, they're not sending them out that much. They, what they're doing is they're making it so you can watch them online. Um. But it's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, when it comes to voting for best movie, I mean, come on, there were a lot of really good movies. I just saw maybe what I considered one of the best movies of the year, and that is it won the uh, BAFTA this year, it was All Quiet on the Western Front. Oh, really? Which is, uh, it's on Netflix if you want to watch it. It's, it's incredible. It's an incredible film. But there were a lot of decent films this year. I mean, so how do you compare All Quiet on the Western Front to, say, the thing with, uh, what's her name in it? Uh, oh, God. It, it, it had a, one name. Oh, well, I've, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I can't remember stuff anymore. Well, you know what movie they sent me? What? The um, Fablemans. Oh, the Fablemans. Fablemans. Yeah, yeah. Good little picture. I don't know that it was the best picture of the year, but it was a good well, little I don't, picture. I, didn't, I haven't seen any of the other pictures nominated, but I would not vote for this one as being the best picture of the year. Did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good picture. I mean, it's a good little picture. It's a nice uh, slice well, of a, life. It's a little picture. It's a little picture. And it, it, it's not bad. You know, I enjoyed it. I think the ending was kind of good. I think they... He, right. he did something interesting there, you know, where um, he's talking with John Ford, and Ford is teaching him about the horizon. Right. Always shoot for the horizon. Right. Don't shoot below the horizon. Don't shoot above the horizon. And the last shot in the film is him walking down through the canyons of this movie studio, these sound stages. Right. And the camera is low, and all of a sudden it moves high to the horizon. Right. I thought that was a nice touch. You know, but it's... It, and uh, Judd Hirsch's performance is pretty phenomenal. Short, but phenomenal. Right. Uh, and, it, it, you know, it's a good little film, but it's not the best film of the year. How do you compare... No. And even if you are going to compare it, how do you compare that to All Quiet on the Western Front? They're entirely different films. You know, so I, I never liked this idea of competition in the arts. The only competition I think you should go for is how many tickets did you sell? How good was it? Are you right. happy? Are you happy with the way it turned out? Right. 
But we, we live in this thing where we're constantly having these contests. We got the Emmys, we got the this, we got the that, you know, we got the SAG AFTRA. I mean, who cares right. who cares about SAG AFTRA and what they vote for? You know. Plus there you don't have anything like best movie. You have best ensemble. Right, 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 right. You know, which I think is kind of nice because I think it takes a whole bunch of people to make a good movie, a right. whole bunch of good acting performances, and I think Best Ensemble is a is a nice category to have. Um, in England, I was watching the Baftas. Do you ever watch the Baftas? No. They have some awards. That, one of their awards is Best Film Not English. <laughs> That's their way of saying best foreign film, but they say right. not 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 from England. Right. Yeah, and I go okay. That's not a bad award. Uh, right. Uh, uh, in their TV awards, they have one. What do they call? What do they call reality shows? Uh, scripted reality. Oh, okay. <laughs> best scripted reality show. You know. Uh, it, 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 the British are very honest about their voting, you know, and they have a lot of categories that, you know, allow best, best new actor, best new actress, right. you know, or best performer. So, I mean, it, it, you know, they're a little more honest about it, but, you know, get to the Oscars, geez almighty, you know, yeah, so. Who's going to MC the Oscars? Huh? Who's going to MC the Oscars? Oh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Now, you could argue, well, gee, he's just a TV guy. But, you know, they've had just TV guys hosted before. Right, they, David, right, right, David right. David Letterman was one of the worst hosted shows of all time. Is that right? Well, what he did is he came out and he did stupid pet tricks at the Oscars, you know. And, and all his Hallmark bits he was doing at the Oscars, and it just didn't work. Just, right. just did not work. Kimmel did a pretty nice job a couple of years ago. See, people have to understand, you're hosting the Oscars. You're the host. Who's the star of the show? The, the host. The Oscars. Oh, okay. Are the star. What you do is you get up, you do a little monologue, right? You right. Get, you get the crowd ready for the night, and you right. introduce the first person that's going to come out and give away an award. And, right. and then you you move you step aside you become almost transparent and you let the show be the star right and some right. people don't understand that you a know, good MC does that get out of the way let the night speak for itself right you know, nobody's tuning in to see David Letterman host the Oscars no it could be Alex Bennett hosting Oscars and they'd still watch it you know right they probably stop. Right. They probably stop watching it about ten minutes in. But uh, you know. But I mean, it, 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 the host is. I never. Do you ever watch the Oscars for the host? No. You know, you watch it to see. Well, I was interested in what Chris Rock had to say. Yes, that was interesting. That was you but, know. But he wasn't a host. He was just a presenter. Right. You know, and he made some lame joke about. Will Smith's wife, and the next thing you know, he's getting slapped. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Years earlier, there was a movie, silent film, called He Who Gets Slapped. So, it, it should have starred Chris Rock, I guess. <laughs> it was a movie. It started, uh, I think, did it start? It started Lon Chaney. Yeah. Yeah. At some clown who was a guy who had a... Did, did horrible things in his life or whatever, and now he's a clown. And his act is people slapping him. Uh, it was a silent film. Good silent that's film. That's his act? Yeah. That's good. his shtick? That's his shtick, is getting slapped. And so he lets people slap him, because that's his way of kind of making up for his bad past. It's a, it's a good little film. It's a silent film. Nobody will watch it, so why am I even mentioning it? Yeah. It was interesting. It's funny if who, who if All Quiet on the Western Front wins the Oscar this year, 
Yeah. Be the second time it's won an Oscar. It won it as a uh, as a film back in I think it was somewhere around like uh, 28, 29. Yeah, early. For, I think the first German sound film, if I'm not mistaken. But, really? Uh, yeah, but it was, the first film was terrific. It was one, wonderful. Done by Universal. Anyway, we've run out of uh, we were not run out of uh, um, uh, life here doing this thing, and uh, it's always good talking to you. Oh, I can't believe we're out of time. Yeah, because it's just you know you 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 bring the best out in me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, he'll be here again next week. Please so give a big round of applause to the star of our show, Stephen Kravitz. Yay! Yay! This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, pretty good, huh? 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 I love, uh, you know, we all like uh, Steve, and I'm so happy to talk to him. He kind of makes me feel good. Okay? All right. Anyway, hey, listen, uh, before we get going, well, i got something I want to play you here. Uh, it's just a quickie, really. Uh, let me explain to you. As you know, I'm no big fan of Bill Maher. I mean, if, for, on a personal basis, because of a run-in I had with him, God, 25, 30 years ago. <laughs> he just wasn't the most pleasant of people. And uh, we, uh, we're not that happy with, uh, with the way he uh, handled us at a show where I was... Uh, well, I've told the story before where I was hosting... Uh, a comedy, uh, a comedy show called HBO's. Uh, what was it? Stand, stand, stand up only. What was it? One night. I can't remember what it was called now. See, I'm, I'm gone. I've had it. And it, one one night stand. Okay, one night stand. And uh, I was doing the warm up and stuff, and he called me in and. They said they he wanted to see me, and the story goes. I, I I've told the story so many times I shouldn't even be telling it again. And then uh, I go into the room with him, and he looks at me, and he goes, uh, "So you do the warm up? Uh, yeah. Do you do any uh, any political stuff?" I said, "Well, I do a little, couple of political comments, but that's about it." And he said, "Well, don't do any political. I do political." And I went, "How much are you making for this show tonight?" said, I think you're making $20,000 for this show tonight. I'm making $350. Follow me. And I left. It was the most ungracious thing that one performer could do to another. Okay? All right. Cut to, to, not, to now. To now. And uh, I've got a cut here from the, uh, the podcast that he does called uh, Club Random. If you haven't seen it, it's not bad. Here's the problem with Club Random. Uh, he has a bunch of uh, booze there and pot and encourages everybody to, like, you know, partake of the pot, partake of the booze. And by the time they're about 15 minutes in, he's, it's horrible. It's just, it just gets terrible. Uh, Mars ceases to be funny or a good interviewer. He loses it all. And he thinks he's still got it because he's high and he loves getting high, you know. So it's, it's in that respect, it's not a very good show, not a very good interview show. You can find better interviews with these people elsewhere. And if he wouldn't get high, he could probably do a pretty good show with that thing, but he isn't. Well, anyway, the other night, the other day, he had on uh, Greg Gutfield. I don't know if you know who this guy is, but this guy is a late night talk show host on Fox. Okay, and so needless to say, he has to be somewhat, what can we call it, right wing? Well, yeah, he is right wing. And um, uh, although he and I, I tuned it, so when I saw that Gutfield was on Bill Maher's Club Random, I figured I'll watch it. This could be interesting because their politics are not identical. And instead they're talking about this thing and that thing and, uh, you know, uh, and... Uh, Bill Maher's getting higher and higher, you know, and he's not doing a very good interview. Um, but anyway, in the midst of it all, in the midst of it all, uh, they, uh, uh, what was that? Oh, I, something came up here. Okay. Uh, in the midst of it all, 
um, they're talking about comedians and comedy and so on and so forth, and this particular thing comes up. Mm. I remember, so I, the late 70s was like, for me, what comedy was like, we, there was this guy, Alex Bennett, do you remember that guy? Yeah. He had a radio show. Vaguely, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, a radio show. So I grew up in the Bay Area. So all of those people were on that show. Okay. There we go. That's, that's, to, be, to begin with, there are two things interesting about that is that this guy was a fan of mine, obviously, because he remembered me all the, after all these years. He remembered my name and the show and what we did in the morning and so on, which is very nice. How can I hate a right winger that feels that way about me? And uh, the other thing was that uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Maher, when he said, uh, do you know Alex Bennett? He says, uh, the name seems familiar. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, he treated me like an asshole. So anyway, that's, but I thought you'd be interested in that. Should I just play it again one more time just for the hell of it? Mm. I so I, the late 70s was like, for me, what comedy was like, we, there was this guy, Alex Bennett, do you remember that guy? Yeah. He had a radio show. Vaguely, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, a radio show. So I grew up in the Bay Area. So vaguely, vaguely, yeah, vaguely I remember him. I remember him telling me to go fuck myself. Anyway, I thought I would play that. That will get me demonetized because they'll say, oh, it belongs to somebody else. But it's fair comment. By the way, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, YouTube is starting to piss me off. A great deal uh, because they, they've been, they've demonetized me a couple of times about three times last week and two of the one of the times I got them to take it away but you know I mean I, we didn't do anything I the one night it, it's interesting the one night they did me demonetize me uh, was when they uh, uh, they demonetized me <laughs> and this is fun uh, was uh, the night that the guys called up and started running porno video. Well, I understand that. I managed to catch it after a short amount of time, but I can understand why they demonetized me for that. Uh, but uh, the other shows, I can't understand why they demonetized me. By the way, that show where the porn slipped through got the highest numbers of any show we've done in a long time so you know maybe maybe we found a new thing to do on this show you know hey nobody's calling tonight except this guy who i really like a lot you know and i if if I, nobody else calls and it's just he and i it does wow. it it just you and me that's it wow yeah well wow. what what the hell you know um what now wait a minute let's look at your t-shirt Oh, yeah. Explain it to me. Well, that's the mathematical formula for figuring out the acceleration of a, a, a round object going down an incline. And it's so that's how it, I roll. That's how I roll. Where, now, where again? Do you go to some kind of scientific t shirt yeah, store? Just or go to Amazon.com and say scientific t shirts. And, really? Yeah. Really? I have to send away for one and try and better you. <laughs> I got a head start. <laughs> you certainly do. I mean, every time you come on, you have a different T-shirt. I try. How much? How much shows running? They run about eighteen, nineteen dollars. I mean, I have nothing but a bunch of T-shirts that say nineteen thirty-nine on them. Yeah, you know. it's a good year. I went to the doctor the other day, you know, and he's examining me, and he asked me to take off my jacket, and you know, and uh, then uh, he looks at me and he goes, "So when were you born?" I said 1939. I said, I, he, I know, it's on your T-shirt. <laughs> well, you know, that was, that was fun. That was fun. So where is there, is there anything happening tonight that we don't know about? I sure don't know. Usually we get a lot of people on, oh, here we go. Yeah. Now, now we got Scott Boddicker is calling. Okay, good. I still, I'm stealing him away from Jack. Uh, hi there, Scott. Oh, he has to connect his audio. Yep. Yeah, hi, Scott. You How you doing? Good. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, I, uh, uh, a couple of things I want to talk about. Um, I am so fascinated by why Rupert Murdoch testified the way he did in that case with Dominion against uh, Fox. Yeah. Um, he pretty well threw some of his people to the walls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why he was doing that. Now, to begin with, remember, he's like 92 years old, okay? Yes, and so, you know, I don't know why. Are you, you have a theory? Uh, why, yeah, because you know? perjury is a, is a charge that will get you thrown in prison. So he had to tell the truth. Well, that's not not a hundred percent, okay. In that, what they were asking him were questions which were like, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? But they don't know that he did it, you know. So how are they going to prove, um, uh, you know, perjury if 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 in fact there's no way of proving he's lying? So well, that you know, maybe he didn't want to take the chance. Maybe he didn't want to take the chance, or maybe he saw that. They were going to be had. That they were they were caught doing what they were doing, mm -hmm. and uh, he wanted to kind of mitigate his his um, what can we call it his uh, the, what's losses? The huh? His losses? His losses. Because they're yeah. consumed for like a billion and a, a half. Billion something. Yeah. yeah. Now they may not get that, but the fact is that he probably wanted to mitigate his losses, and figured by admitting this. It kind of softened the whole thing, yeah. you know. But he admitted, in case people don't know, and this is going to, we're going to talk to Phil tomorrow night. I'd be interested to see what his take mm. is on it. But basically, what he admitted to was lying. Yeah. That, that Fox lied about the election. That they all knew that it was fake. They all knew that all the claims were wrong. And yet they went ahead and promoted it because they figured it was good for business okay is, but is it illegal to lie to they're not a news organization they're an entertainment well they're not a, they're will all agree they're not a news organization but is it okay to lie i think if you're passing yourself out as a news organization you don't mm -hmm. how can i put it stretch the truth you know, but they call themselves Fox News. Yeah, uh, I mean they're claiming they're claiming First Amendment rights in all of this, which oh. it's been established already in law that yes, there is there are First Amendment rights, but you can't use your First Amendment rights to uh, uh, vilify somebody else, to tell lies about somebody else, to to. Uh, yeah. You know, so you can't do that, even though you have First Amendment rights. I mean, if I say, uh, hey, you know, I heard that Charlie liked to diddle 14-year-old girls, all right? Which I have, by the way, Charlie. Uh, what are you guys talking about tonight? Am, am I... <laughs> am I... Am I lying, or am I causing... Uh, am I, you know... I, I'm, I can't, you know, I can't even think of words tonight. Am I getting a stroke, by the way? Uh, uh -huh. oh, oh, no. Okay. Welcome to the club. Um, you, you know, I mean, you can't, uh, you can't uh, libel somebody else and uh, uh, expect that your First Amendment rights hold, especially if they can prove you, you did it with malice. And in this case, they're saying Fox wanted to make money. They wanted to keep their audience. They didn't want to lose their audience. And if they came out and said, this whole thing is a sham, which all of them believed. Mm -hmm. And when they held this, uh, this uh, deposition, they asked them specifically about various hosts. And I think I figured out who's going to get fired. Yeah. Okay. Which one do you think, Charlie? Um, well, what's her name? Janine Perot, I think. Oh, they, Judge Janine. Them, yeah, well, I, the, one, the, the one who's really on the chopping block is they went through all these names and they said Hannity. He said, eh, a little, a little, right? Uh, uh, Janine Perot, he said, yeah, a lot. Yeah, a yeah. lot. 
they didn't mention Tucker Carlson in any of this, yeah. which is amazing yeah. to me. Uh, and uh, then uh, they mentioned Lou Dobbs, and he went, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think Dobbs is going to lose his job. I think he's going to be the, the sacrificial lamb, yeah. as it were. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, Janine Pirro, he, he said, yeah, she, she was a liar, you know. Uh, but but I'm amazed that Tucker Carlson wasn't brought up. Maybe he wasn't. Was he? Was he? Prom I don't watch that show. Was he promoting yeah. the uh, the uh, fake? Uh, you know the fake uh, news about uh, the election being rigged. I I don't know. And what the what they were also saying is that the big problem that Fox has is they started having on people who were very much election deniers. Mm -hmm. Rudy Giuliani, mm -hmm. the My Pillow guy. Yeah. <laughs> they say that My Pillow guy was spending so much money on Fox they had to put him on. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> uh, and and uh, all these other people who were just promoting the the theory that the election was stolen. And they knew it wasn't true. They absolutely, they have memos between them. So, yeah. I mean, I just don't know how anybody of any intelligence would, who was a Fox fan, would still be a Fox fan today. You know, I, well, maybe, yeah, maybe I'd go over to Newsmax or someplace like that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily change allegiances uh, politically. But I don't think they're going to stick around there, <clears throat> you know. So I mean, I I, I I want to ask Phil. I want to see Phil. Are you going to yeah. still going to watch Fox, knowing they lie? I bet he says yes. And by the way, it's not me saying they lie. It's Rupert Murdoch who owns the company who says they lie. And he also the admits the advantage that he has. He's over ninety years old. Yeah. And he could say. You know, I, I've been, I went on vacation seven years ago, and I let those guys run it themselves. Well, he did say that he talked to the uh, the head of Fox, which is a woman, I can't remember her name, <laughs> and uh, he said to her, do you think this is right? And she says, well, it is a matter of whether it's right or not. We've got to promote this thing the way we're promoting it, or we're going to lose money in advertisers. <laughs> because we're gonna get less ratings and we're gonna be able to sell our ads for less. That was the whole thing she came back at him with. And he then and so said, did he say, well, okay. then he said in the deposition, he says, in hindsight, I should have done something about it. <laughs> Listen, he's so old, he may not live to hear what the, what, what, the, what, gonna... yeah, what, the okay. uh, what the verdict is on this whole thing. That's right. I don't know. Yeah. But it's 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 amazing, it's just amazing. Um, the the you know that people have we've known this about Fox for years, you know, we've known this, and and nobody wants to believe it, especially the Fox viewers. But now they've got proof positive. Maybe maybe I don't know. I mean I don't know how they go from this point on. All I know is that. People have been watching Fox, and Fox has not been mentioning this news item. Not at all. Which they should. If they're a news operation, they should run this story. Uh, and I, if I ran Fox, no matter what was going on over there, I would run the story, and I would say, you know, in, in all transparency, we let you know that this com country, company is being sued by Dominion uh, voting machines, and that our, and this is what our president, Rupert Murdoch, said in testimony and so on, and just report it. They don't have to comment on it or anything else, but just report it. But they're not. You know, instead they're running Janine Pirro's cooking tips. I <laughs> yeah, they're trying to ring really safe now, you know, so. But, uh, Can I be like Phil and Alan and change the subject? Sure. Mm -hmm. Venus, uh oh, hello. Yeah, what? uh, yeah, they have um, Venus and uh, what's it called? The two um, 
The plants are, though, on the west coast, they're right side by side tonight. So you can see them with the naked eye. You can't see half the form, but um, yeah. Uh, Venus and Serena. Yeah. I thought it was the yeah. yeah. I thought they were uh, Venus and <laughs> I thought he was going to say. Venus and Mars? No, 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 no. Jupiter? Saturn? Yeah. Jupiter. It's Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah. It's pretty cool because I came home and we have like, you know, the Santa Cruz Mountains and everything is black and there's two lights up there and I see and they're pretty close. And I was wondering what they were and I was staring at them for a couple minutes because I thought they were planes, but they were too, you know, it's too close. Mm -hmm. And then it went online and yeah, that's what they are. Well, a couple of years ago, um, uh, Mars was very, at its closest point to the Earth. Mm -hmm. And for several nights, I looked out my window, and there it was, man, just just yeah. blaring at me. I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah, so Jupiter and Venus, and so, of course, you know what's going on with all my friends on Facebook. What? Everybody's taking pictures of them, and all you see are oh, two, two dots. Two dots. Like one dot's a little brighter than oh. the other. And that's, everyone's pictures right now. It's like, oh, my God. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah. I have my shirt for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Uh, okay, oh. he's going to go get. Uh -oh. When St. Patrick's Day? It's in March. No, yeah, March seventeenth no. is a Friday. Oh, Italian. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other, the other shirt, and I got it like on, like uh, Charlie does on Facebook. So the other shirt, it was green and then white. It said, uh, uh, "Everybody's a little bit Irish on St. Patrick's Day, except Ooh. for Italians. We're Italian." <laughs> <laughs> I hate uh, uh, St. Patrick's. There they are. Look, there they are. That's Venus and uh, Jupiter. I don't know which is which, but no, well, they are. Yeah, there they are. One's brighter than the other. And uh, the green is the red one. one brighter. I would say the brightest one would be Venus. Probably. First of all, because it's the closest to the uh, to the sun mm -hmm. of, of the two, so it would get it would be brighter, wouldn't you say, Charlie? Yeah, it would get more light, and then it's also closer to the Earth than Jupiter, so mm -hmm. it would look brighter from that. How many miles from the sun is Venus? Do you know? I do. 67 million miles. I thought it was 73. Yeah, depends on what time of year. Yeah. yeah. It's got an elliptical orbit. Yeah. How far is Mars? 142 million miles. 144,000. How about million. Uranus? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're not going to get monetized. <laughs> well, when I was a kid, I was taught it was 144. It used to be, I used to be able to say how far each planet was from the sun. That's how much I was into astronomy. But now that I'm this old, I've forgotten all of it, you know? Yeah, me too. You know. Um, hey, you and Bodek are matched tonight. Nope. Not really. Yeah, got the little gray and white Pendleton going. Yeah, well, this isn't a Pendleton. This is a, uh, what is this? This is a, uh, I forget. The Costco word. special. No, it isn't a Costco <laughs> special. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Wait a minute. There it is. There's there's the, what does it Cos say? Costco. Oh, Kirkland. Can there you go. No, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, don't hurt yourself. Oh, Jeez, I don't want to. No, I don't want you to fall off the chair, and then I'm to blame. Let's not. Alex Bennett falls I, off the chair, I, I, and I don't. I, I don't want to give. I, I don't want to give Boddicker any chance to take his clothes off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we've been there, done that. Yeah. Been there, done that. Yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, I I'll haven't say. been drinking today. Now here we go. Oh, I know what it is, and I'm. Wait a minute. I'm, it's, I, hold on. Now I'm getting my earphones. are all. <laughs> Getting all tangled up. Oh, God, he can't do any of this anymore. L.L. Nice Bean. L.L. Bean. L.L. Bean. L. Bean. Nice. Yeah. Marjor yeah. Marjorie. Marjorie. I don't know. Marjorie buys these for me. I got three of them. And I've got one she got me that's really oversized that I don't wear that much. It's got an Afghan lining. Yeah. Yeah. Keeps me really warm and toasty. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So, anyway, so where were we? Oh, so we were talking yeah. about that. Yeah. Uranus. Uh, Uranus. Venus. Uranus. Yeah. Yeah. Pluto. Uranus. Pluto's planet. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so you know, um, um, we got a little astronomical news here from uh, 
from Brian. So it's very nice, Brian. Thank you so much for that. Hello, Tony. Hello. Did you clean clean your lens tonight? Must have. Yeah. He I'm did. using my newer computer, the Surface. That was my old computer, laptop. Uh -huh. Oh, you're using the Surface? Yeah, Microsoft, yeah. Oh. Is that even a computer? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a full-fledged computer, and you can fold it down. It's really nice. My brother bought it. Well, you know, the Surface started out as being kind of like a... a, a glorified tablet. A glorified yeah. tablet. Yeah. I got the keyboard for it, too. It's nice, Alex. I can... It's like really So it's light. not really a... Comp it's... It's it's a yeah. tablet that you have a keyboard for. Yeah, I bought the keyboard for it and uh, the wireless mouse too. I love it. It's it's my most favorite. For Microsoft, it's one of my favorites, really. It is powerful though. He got me a top of the line one, so it has a lot of memory. Yeah, well, your camera is pretty good. Yeah, it's, you know, the camera is really nice. Yeah, I but, my but giving you, knowing the way you do things, given a couple of months, it'll be like dirty and <laughs> filthy yeah, and. I'm like, I run my gaming group on here, and I, I like it. You have a gaming group? Yeah, I run a... You're going to laugh at this, but I, I run it for a while. I'm a game master for a couple of my friends. Some One person lives in Jersey. Two people live out by you guys. What do you mean you game, a game and master? It's... I, yeah, I'm not, I, it takes place in Greyhawk. It's uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I'm the game master. I create the whole adventure for them. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I got all my notes here. You got to see all my notes I have. No, we don't. I write... I have a Discord Oh, so channel, this is a so Dungeon and Dragons game. type game. This is a not uh, kill the zombies game. No, no, it's nothing oh, like okay. The Last of Us. Right now, they're in the world of Greyhawk, but I... I don't, I don't even start with now. any of this. I don't understand yeah, I what you're talking you about. And you've got, you got a bunch of old farts here, with the exception of Brian, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I have my game notes. I just wrote the notes for them. What happened? The, we I don't put, know. I put a little synopsis on oh, me. God session. damn it! He's like, drinking really. coffee again. Yeah, I know. They love me as the game man. So one guy says, "They, he says, they just, you know, they like how I, I'm good with this. I, I'm always good at creating stories and stuff. So they like it." Enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have the whole thing mapped out. You would think it's like Game of Thrones. <laughs> So anyway, I was sounds watching cool. yeah, it. I think it sounds cool, Tony. Thank you. It sounds Thank cool. You. I, I do a thing whenever yeah. I'm watching like somebody being interviewed or whatever, an old star or something like that. I want to find out if they're still alive. Mm -hmm. In fact, it really should be like a, uh, a, a site. Are they alive or not alive? You know, alive or not alive. And you put in a name and they go alive or not alive. Um, so I... Um, so I'll be seeing an interview with somebody on on television, and uh, I will then say to my say to um, Alexa, oh. you know, I say Alexa here because I use the other word for it. Alexa uh, is so and so still alive, and then she will come back and say, well, no, she's not alive, and or he's not alive, and he or she died at a certain date, and so on. And uh, so I'm doing this all the time. I just got to find out. And then I want to find out how old they were when they died or how old are they now. And um, tonight I was watching an interview with a woman I interviewed years ago, Kim Novak, uh, who when I was a kid, I got to tell you, we were, t were we talking the other night about our spank bank? You know, yeah, women, yeah. women that turned us on when we were younger. I don't think anybody turned me on more in her day than Kim Novak. I mean, Very oh, it, 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 the first time I ever had like this, this sexual thing watching a movie was when I worked a drive-in at uh, in Marin County and they were showing Picnic with Kim Novak and um, I'm trying to remember who uh, the other guy. Yeah, boy, my mind tonight is just it's trash tonight. I don't know what happened. Anyway, uh, William Holden. William Holden. William Holden. Yeah. I just said William Holden. And uh, Rosalind Russell was in that, and Arthur O'Connell. See, I can name all the other people. Anyway, she, they do a dance together in that picture that is just so sexy. And it's a, I mean, I, it's the first time I remember getting an erection watching a movie. And by the way, that was a time in my life where I was a kid where I got an erection by just walking down the street. You know, my pants were rubbing against it. Uh, corduroy, corduroy could give me an erection. 
Okay. <laughs> they have the clips online, and I just turned it off because I just don't want to watch something that you guys your first erection. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> a little weird. So I don't want to watch it. But they have the clips on. Oh, and no, and the music was very sexy, music and so on. And she became my, my spank bank. I mean, she was really um, uh, quite, a, quite a babe, quite a babe. So they were doing an interview with her that I saw. I don't know how many years ago it was because it was done by Robert Osborne of TCM, who's now dead. Uh, but uh, I, I watched the interview, and then I said to myself, I wonder how old she is. How old do you think Kim Novak is? Is she still I alive? She's still alive. I just looked it up. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mention it. Don't mention it. I won't then. say it. I won't you, say it. You're one of those unfair people. They won't on who, on who wants to be a millionaire. They won't let you be a phone a friend. She's you know. got to be ninety. You hit it right on the button. Yeah. She's ninety years old. Yep. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to see. You yeah. know, I just right. want to remember her as I remember yeah, her. Right. Yeah. You know, it was bad enough I had to see her in this interview with Osborne where she had to be maybe 70, you know, and she wasn't looking that great. But see, that's the problem with funerals. You know, when you go to a funeral in an open casket, yeah. you know, and it was a friend and we just, uh, one of my friends passed away from, from cancer uh, like six months ago, I guess. She was a gorgeous girl and everything. And man, it's like my friend and I, I don't want to go up to the casket because you know, no matter, they never, ever, ever get, you know, get it right. You know, they're, they're, it's just impossible to have a dead person look no. like. Well, to begin, with, uh, to begin with, to begin with, that's like the last, the yeah. last thing you remember is them in the casket. And then they look shrunken and they're different color, shade that they usually were. It's the worst thing. But my question is, why you do an open casket? You know, shouldn't people remember you as you were, not as you were dead? Yeah, my casket's going to be closed and I'm going to have a picture like this or something. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes, uh, Tony. Not that sound morbid, but when we laid my mother out, she looked good. I thought she was still alive. I said, man, she looks good. You know, she didn't look, you know, COVID didn't really I, I didn't have a, uh, we didn't have an open casket for my father and I didn't have an open casket for my mother. I didn't you want didn't? to see her. I didn't want to see her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not thrilled with it. I either, hated her that like, much. I didn't want to see her. Oh. I was like, mom, you're not going to wake me up tonight. Nope. <laughs> I'm joking. I think every funeral I've gone to has been an open casket. Really? Uh, yeah, the, I've never want, been to one without one, Charlie. Terrible. Yeah, I don't like it myself. I would never do My dad that. didn't look anything like himself. Really? Really? Yeah. Exactly yeah. my point. Yeah. yeah, what they do is they stamp a cartoon face on them and, you know, I mean, really, it's, it's uh, uh, there's no way they can really make somebody look, it look, gee, I love it when they say, gee, doesn't he look good? No, he's yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, dead. You want to change place? <laughs> yeah. No, no, he doesn't look good. He looks dead. I still, Alex, I told this to Shecky. I was still mad at my uncle when he wanted to go to lunch, hide a COVID. And after my mother's in the box, he wanted to eat. I was going to throw him. I wanted to wheel him right out the gas thing. Really? Come on. It's a second wave, and he's worried about eating lunch. Even huh? though I did go to a diner afterwards without him. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, God, I had a chap lip here. Jeez. But Alex, in the Jewish religion, did they have open? My mother used to say they used to lay them out in the house. In the house, was that open casket or closed? Where? But for the Jew, closed. my mother said she knew Jewish people in Brooklyn. They used to have it in the house. To, uh, I think Jews more, but by and large, don't do open casket. I may I be wrong. Am I right? Am I right, uh, Jeff? I agree with you. Yeah, we. I mean, but we don't. Jews don't usually do open casket. They don't. Okay. I know she said they used, she used to go in the house and they used to lay them out in the house right away and then they'd be buried like right the next day pretty much. Uh, well, Jews yeah. have to bury their, their dead within two days. Or within two days. Yes. What? My mom said when she went in the house for her girlfriend in Brooklyn, they would bury them the next day. They lay, they came in the house and then well, the next day. They I mean, that's acceptable. What I'm saying, you have to do it within two days. The Muslims oh. are one day. One day? Okay. One day. There's a theory behind that, and it's a very good one, and that is that if you bury somebody, the faster you bury somebody, the faster everybody gets on with their lives, you know, uh, and I think that's that's pretty much true, you know, 
Uh, I I know you know I knew Christians man who let their parents wait two three weeks before yeah, they buried them. That's crazy. And I yeah, went you know how some can of the you they would go a whole how can you even live there. with the fact that your relative is lying in a mortuary somewhere on ice you know I who, I tell you I really felt bad for uh, Christy who was a producer of mine not her mother her grandmother I think died. Mm. And there was a funeral strike in San Francisco. Oh, and they couldn't oh, bury wow. her for two months. Oh, God. wow. What's the point now? A lot of ice on that one, I'll tell you. Yeah, I mean, God, you might have to pay rent to keep it there. And, and by the way, you know, it's interesting, but rigor mortis is only temporary. Did you know yeah. that? Oh, really? Yeah. What? See, Charlie knows all these little facts that I know. I've been watching all those Perry Mason shows. Oh, my yeah, God. Perry Mason's going on HBO. I haven't seen her. Uh, and by the way, the, the new Perry Mason is coming back on on HBO yes. Max. Oh, yeah, just, that's just, a good yeah. show. I never yeah, I never, li I never liked that piece of crap with Raymond Burr. Uh -huh. you know? who, who's, who, who's playing? Who, who's playing him? The guy who was the star, I can't remember his name, the star of um, <clears throat> of the Americans. Do you remember the Americans? Oh, yes. okay. 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 Reese or something yeah, like something that. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, this paramation is very well done. And uh, uh, we got two more weeks of uh, The Last of Us. Mm, and then everybody yeah. can stop hearing about how wonderful The Last of Us is for another year. Yeah. I, I watched the first show and it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah it. it's a good show. I'm hoping. Yeah. The Did latest. You hear something hmm? about Wednesday? I heard something about Wednesday may not be a second season. Wednesday oh. may not have a second season? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yes. Uh, no, but it, it it should because it was very awesome. well received. You yeah. know, good little show. Yeah. I, I heard some rumor about it. Maybe it's not true. Yeah, some clickbait or something. No, I think it, 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 I can't see that they, they certainly if it hasn't got another season, it's because like the star doesn't want to do it or something like that. Yeah, no, I, no, that's right. Yeah, and then John Wick's coming out at the end of the month. I don't know if you like John Wick. I love John Wick. Is this a series of John Wick? Yeah, this is number four. This oh, is, number yeah, four yeah. of John Wick. I see. Yeah. That stars the Keanu Reeves. Keanu, Keanu Reeves, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I never liked him. Do you, do you like him? It, no, I don't like him at all, but the John Wick series is really good. Okay. All he right. did a movie called Chain Reaction. I thought it was excellent. Really? I haven't seen it in the theaters, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I never even liked the Matrix movies. I liked the first one. Oh, I did like the first yeah. yeah. I thought it was well done. Now, here's somebody named Wayne who wants to come on. Uh, he's okay. Yeah, he's a good he's guy. Okay. He's been on Jack's show. He's okay. Oh, Wayne is okay? Yes. yes. Well, let me get ready here yeah, with my it's camera. Born, you guys are in trouble. Well, what I'm what I'm gonna <laughs> do? What's his, what's what his last name? No, is it? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Wayne. let him in. I'm gonna <laughs> let him in. Something. Wayne Brady. What, if Wayne I, Bickcock. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna let him in. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to my camera. See, Ooh. and then we let him in. I found a nice way of doing this. He was uh, bad because you wouldn't let him in last week. Oh really? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well. He's not picking up yet. Oh, there he is. There, he is. there, there we he go. Is. Wayne, are you there? Let me make sure no porn is coming our way. No, oh, no, not. there he is. Wayne. Hello, Wayne. Wayne. How are you? Oh, Wayne, connect it's your audio. audio it's connecting. Yeah. It would be funny if somebody, like, came on and went, oh, well, it is a live human being, and then he stood up and dropped his pants, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, where's, where's my buddy Adam? Remember Adam? Oh, oh yeah, that guy. Are you? Here. Can you hear us now, Wayne? Wayne? I can't hear you though. Wayne, can you hear us? He he could do the Skype, but he's he's first time doing the Zoom, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, just uh, here. Well, let me let me tell him. To Raise you. your hand if you can hear us. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I can tell him to. Um... Oh, he's kind of thinking. Maybe. There we go. Oh, there, there, we, oh, go. there we go. Can you hear us? Yeah. Yes, I hear you now. See, okay, perfect. Good. Where are you calling from, Wayne? Uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Well, hello, Wayne. Okay. Hello there. We Sorry didn't we didn't know who you were, so uh, we were thinking it would just be somebody would be showing us some porn, but no, no. it's, it's <laughs> no such luck. 
<laughs> I so checked you- in the Jack show uh, last, uh, actually, the first two days of this week, and uh, yeah. um, I got the okay from, uh, you know, Scott and uh, and Charlie that uh, it'd be okay to come in on, on your program. Oh, okay, because they were the ones that attested for you, yeah. but I yeah. still went to my picture. For, isn't that a good idea of got going to my picture? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I had my tablet on running the YouTube version there when I heard when I heard those guys say he's okay he's okay and that's when I shut that off and then just concentrated on this PC here. Yeah, yeah. Well, good to see you. now you're in Cleveland, you say? Yes. Uh huh. Southeast side, yeah. Yeah. Of a suburban area. I've not, been not to, within the I city would, limits. I went went to Cleveland once to go see okay. an old girlfriend in Cleveland, and I kind of like the town. It's a nice town. You it's know. not bad. You know, it, well, it, it, it used to be really nice, I think, and then it went through very bad times. Yeah. When I went there, a lot of the stuff was closed down and so on, but I could see the potential of the city to be a very nice city. And my favorite TV show was Hot in Cleveland. That's, uh, yeah, they use, uh, they name places in there that are in town, you know. Yeah. And also the Drew Carey show, which we catch uh, over yeah. here on uh on Rewind TV, that they run two episodes a night over here on Rewind TV. Um, they use a lot of uh, names for areas in the Cleveland area here. They never shot in Cleveland, though, right? You know, uh, there's a promo that they do where they got a whole bunch of people running toward the camera, and the camera yeah. elevates itself as they run to them. It's not a very long shot. Well, just but, two or three uh, seconds but it's long. a promo. It's yeah, not. I, a, I, I, that might have been filmed in Cleveland because I know another section of it. They have him running down. Uh, uh, another cut shows him running through uh, uh, the you know the football stadium there, Brown mm-hmm. Stadium, with uh, the guys chasing him. So that had to have been filmed. Here. Well, I know Hot in Cleveland was all done in a studio in L.A. Yeah, Hot in Cleveland. You yeah. know, but uh, there's some real zingers on that one. Yeah, I love that show. I love that show. That was a show I missed when it first ran, so I then binge watched the whole thing and was so happy I missed it the first time because I could discover something new and wonderful, you know? Yeah, and be able to catch every episode from beginning to end there without having to wait next week, you know? Or yeah. next year, you know? <laughs> so anyway, um, but uh, uh, so anyway, so welcome. You you know, now that we know who you are, uh, we will pick up anytime you call. Okay, very good, thanks. Y- yeah. Now get the hell out of here. No. Yeah. All right. Right. No, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've been watching for quite some time. It's just I finally got the nerve up to. Actually, I installed Zoom and I installed the Skype. Yeah. And, and did it that way. So finally yeah. worked up the nerve to, to yeah. call in. You know. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you did. Um, so anyway, we were talking about. Let's see here. What have we talked about so far tonight? The uh, Rupert Murdoch revelations. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and uh, talked about the conjunction yeah, of Venus and Jupiter. Uh, yeah. Yes. Kim Novak. Kim Novak. Kim yeah. Novak. Yeah. God. Angie I, Dickinson. Is she dead or alive? I think she's dead. Now, hold on a second. We oh, go, I think wait a minute. We, you know, you remember the magic eight ball? Well, I've got the closest thing. I've got uh, 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 um, Alexa here. Hold on a second. Ready? Uh, Echo. Is Angie Dickinson alive or dead? Angie Dickinson is still alive. Oh. She is 91 oh. years old. 91. 91. Yep. Yeah. Imagine five minutes later, Alexis says, Angie Dickinson is now deceased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Tony. <laughs> well, let's, let's ask this one. Uh, Echo, is Alex Bennett still alive? <laughs> <laughs> Echo, is Alex uh, Bennett still alive? Still checking. <laughs> As per our current database, Alex Bennett is still alive. As per oh. Wikipedia, last update, May 10th, 2020. Yeah, so I guess... Would you like I... another answer? Just say, next. No, I don't want another answer. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I guess, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, I'm still alive, right? Yeah. Jimmy Carter is in his last is in the last. Yeah, yeah he's in hospice. Now. And, and, and so we can oh, yeah. and so we can definitely say Alex Bennett is still alive. He's telling you on the street that is funny. Now uh, he's dead. 
I October. Know. That I saw. Suddenly, I was you know they were doing like on the SAG, the SAG Awards the other night. They were doing all the people who had died in the last year, and um, up comes Gilbert's picture, and I went, yeah, he he died last year, and I then all of a sudden it just hit me that he was dead, you know, yeah. I, and I couldn't even remember what he died of. And then when I asked uh, Alexa, the answer I got was, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So I, it just, it was sad. That was so sad. That and uh, uh, a couple of the other people we lost last year. And Norm MacDonald and uh, what's his name? Bob Saget, too. Bob, Bob Saget. Saget. Yeah, they, and there's, there's a lot of pictures of Bob and uh, Gilbert together, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Pretty crazy. And and uh, let's see. And then we lost. Uh, who else did we lose this week? We lost. We lost Stella Stevens. Yeah, Stella Stevens. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to depress all you people out there. Hell, who knows? You know, I haven't gotten a report back from the doctor yet. They've been taking an awfully long time to analyze my blood. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, you know. Maybe it's coming out like maple syrup or something, and they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. You know. But uh, I, what I don't want is I don't want to have to go back into this place oh. and get my my blood drawn again after what happened last time. Look at this. This is still, it's almost a week yeah. later. Yeah. There oh, you yeah. go. Wow. Right, right there. That wow. one, the one on my hand here, I think is pretty much gone. If I turn the lights out, you can probably see it. See it better. Oh yeah. See, see that? Okay. Wow. And then oh, up here they didn't leave a mark, but uh, three three times stabbing me like crazy. Couldn't find a vein. And this is a place that calls itself Cancer and Blood Specialists. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Give me the needle. I'll do it myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> you know, I um um. So I, you know, I've been, I've been. I, every time I'm watching television now and seeing somebody, I go, "Are they still alive or not?" You know, and how old are they? I like to compare their age to mine. And sometimes I get like really old actors, and I want to yeah. know when they died, because you know, it's funny. Can I, yeah, I gotta, tell, I gotta ask you something, man. Yeah, I think I'm drawn now. I know this sounds odd. The reason why I think I like to watch old documentaries. I was watching one old one on New York. I kind of like seeing stuff now. When, like, when I was younger, like, I don't know, does it mean, like, I don't know, I kind of feel like I like watching some of the older stuff that's before now, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, maybe it's part of aging? It's, but no, I always, when I was a kid, I always liked to find out what happened before I was born. Yeah. It annoys me yeah, that some people me. don't and aren't even obsessed by it. They don't care what happened prior to the day they were born. And when I was growing up, I wanted to know all the actors yeah. from the silent films and stuff like that, you know? I think that uh, there's a lot in the past to really enjoy. Yeah, I used yeah, to love yeah. watching those 30s and 40s movies. Yeah, yeah. but you know, you never really, if you really love movies, you really should get into silent films. And a lot of them, they've done a very nice job of, of doing them now by having new musical scores uh, for them. And the thing was, is that, you know, all you ever used to hear when you saw silent films was rinky-dink piano or something. Mm -hmm. And that never really happened until you get out, got out into the sticks. Until then, you would go to a movie theater here in New York. There was a symphony orchestra in every movie theater for the most part, at least first-run movie theater, uh, playing to, the, uh, to the, the picture, to a score that was created just for that picture. And so if you, get a, and you watch these things with a good score, it's just breathtaking. Yeah. And, and those are available now. And you, there, there are films that if people haven't watched them, there's a great, there's some great films like Sunrise, which was done I think in 1927, and it, or maybe it was 25. Just a great film, just an amazing film, surrealistic, and and uh, it, it had a score that was actually on film before the jazz singer ever came along. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was a, a war picture called The Big Parade, incredible film, you know. Um, and my other spank bank girl was Clara Bow, uh, who was maybe, I think, the hottest woman that ever worked in movies. Uh, but anyway, she was known as the it girl. Yeah. You know. 
Uh, but uh, so I, you know, I, I like to always see stuff that goes on before I'm born. But you know what we've gotten into watching uh, here, and this is this is great YouTube stuff. There's a guy by the name of Jordan Cash, uh, and he does very well. He gets those you know million views on some things, and what he does is he tours apartment apartments that are for rent here in New York City. And the smaller they are, the better. Mm -hmm. He's tried to find the smallest apartments he could find in New York City. There was one that was so small you had to go out into the, to begin with, you had to go out in the hallway to take a shower mm. or to change your mind, you know? <laughs> I mean, it was just, it, it, but it, it, seeing all these apartments and then there's this other guy who goes into these mansions. Like, yes. <laughs> huh? You've seen those, haven't you? Well, I, I, we watch one, uh, a guy from California does them. Oh, really? Wait. A bunch of, he's a, he's from Jordan or he's from Middle Eastern. Yeah, I know the guy you're talking about. It yeah. is. Yeah, he does, yes, he does tons of them. Oh, he's, he's wonderful, a yeah. wonderful show, yeah. And it seems like he actually is a, is a realtor. Because he used the, to be. Yeah, because now he does this YouTube stuff. Well, all the time. way he describes the houses, and he says, "Oh, look at the size of the closets here." And then as you walk in this foyer, and, and he's great. But this Cash <laughs> Jordan is is very funny. He's very funny. He's just you know, uh, he goes around. He's showing these apartments and making. He goes into a. He, he opens up a cabinet door, and there's a can of beans or something in there, and. It's been left behind, and he goes, and you get a can of beans with this apartment, you know, and things like that. But we, Marjorie is just hooked on this guy, just wow. hooked on him. He's replaced Innes with us. Um, Innes, I think, is the guy's name, right? It is, yeah, E-N-E-S. Yeah, yeah his, his stuff's very good. But today, what we got, a, a, I saw one with another guy named Conover or something, and he went, we have these big, tall, ugly buildings now here in Manhattan. I call them the, the pencil buildings. They, you know, they just, they go straight up, you know, and they, they build them on a small footprint so that every floor probably has its own apartment. And today he went to the, tw the penthouse apartment in the tallest of these buildings. I think it was the 88th floor which I think may be taller than the Empire State Building, but I'm not sure. Anybody look up how tall the Empire State Building is? But anyway, this apartment, $45 million if you want to buy it. And if I won the lottery, I would immediately buy this place. 300, as you walk around the apartment, it's the whole top floor, you walk around, you can see the best views of New York you've ever seen in your life. And then Marjorie had to bum it out for me. I said, isn't this wonderful? She says, yeah, but what if it gets cloudy? And I said, you still got a great $45 million apartment, you know? So anyway, that I found fun. Yes, how tall is the Empire State Building? 1,250 feet to the top floor and 1,454 feet to the tip of the... Yeah, but how tall is it floor-wise? Oh, well... How many I'm floors? Huh? Uh... But these things, these new buildings are, for the most part, they're ugly. But I, I keep saying to Marjorie, you know, it really is like when we used to do like... 102? Yeah, 102? Mine, okay, so this thing's only 88. But it probably looks down on the Chrysler building, you know, things like that. Although the Chrysler building built a kind of spire at the top of it, so it could be almost taller than the Empire State Building. Gee. Yeah, Yeah, well, all these buildings have, like, done that. You know, they add this little extra thing, you know. Didn't Trump do that on his building? No, he just didn't... Ad he just added a floor where there wasn't one. <laughs> you know that story. And then he skipped the number. He skipped the numbers, didn't he? Well, the, what? Yeah. What happened was he only had like, oh, I don't know, how many floors is that? It's maybe something like fifty-two floors or something. Okay, let's just say that arbitrarily. But actually, it wasn't fifty. 
two floors. It was actually more like 48 floors. He just yeah. disappeared on the... Uh, Jeff Stein, did you try to call me? No. Just now? Oh, well, somebody is. It says he's oh, Jeff boy. Stein. Yeah. But now... Anyway, I mean, they had this, you know, this thing. I mean, it was just... It, it, he took out like five floors. Yeah. So when you went up in the elevator, all of a sudden it went from like the 43rd floor to the 49th floor. <laughs> so that he could say his was taller than the tallest thing here. Oh, and Jenny Kay... Oh, boy, they're all trying towards the end of the show. You know, uh, you want me to put them on? You can all see penises for the last minute no, of our I, show. I don't know Danny K. They figure you let Wayne in, they might as well try now. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we have a new way of doing it, so they'll never get their stuff on, you know. I mean, I just, I just go to my camera, and then I go look, and we all check it out. And if it's bad, then I hang up on them. And if it's somebody that might want to come on... But, you know, I'm sorry, Jenny, Jeff, how dare you call twice Jeff in the same program? <laughs> yeah, this is terrible. Oh, and now, uh, oh, Phil Meyer. I don't oh, know. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh and, and Matt Sheridan. Oh, that's Matt oh, from Matt the might be, He's in this. That's yes, Matt but Matt. I'll bet it's not that Matt. Oh, okay. You want to see if it is or it isn't? We got a short time here. Let me just uh, let me just bring him in, and we can see. Let me just turn to my camera as I bring in Matt Sheridan. Watch this, folks. We don't know what's going to happen here. It's a big adventure. Here comes Matt Sheridan connecting audio, and uh, what's going to happen here? Uh, it's not. Uh, then he's not uh, unmuting. So Matt, see. There's no Matt Sheridan here. Look at that. He's yeah. on the chat, but he is on the chat. You know he what said, it That's is? That's not me. Oh, he <laughs> said that's not me. Yeah, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. I'm not calling. <laughs> retreat, retreat. Abort yeah. mission. Yeah, yeah. That's not me. But no, but you know the thing is, I think I, is Matt Sheridan on the on the thing. He's he, he on the yeah. chat. He just Some, said that's not me. Yeah. Uh, so they're going on the chat. That's not me. On there. I'm right. not calling. See what happened was, they're going to the to the chat. Yeah, they're looking for the name. names there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That are on there, and so uh, maybe people have to say I'm calling in now. You know, if there are people that we sort of know. Oh, because Char the it, here's Charlie yeah. Wallace. Charlie Wallace Charlie's just called. Oh, oh Charlie, you let him on. Yeah. He's always on. <laughs> Yeah, it's all those big black guys anyway. Okay, well, wait a minute. Let me stuff. put let me put you guys back on there. I forgot to put your face back on. I'm just just my face. But yeah. Do you do these people really think we're that stupid? Uh, yeah. yeah. See, like if Matt on the chat said I'm calling in now, then you would know it was him. But, yeah. Yeah. You can't. You you know the there, people who are bombing us aren't going to be on here as their name and like. I wonder if maybe I should change my address for the uh, Zoom calling. You know, I I don't know. I just wish well, Zoom would they come get it out. Off of YouTube, it what? wouldn't matter. What? They get it off. They get it off of YouTube. That's how I do it. So you just yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, who knows? Who knows? I I give up. It's not. It's not fun. Anyway, uh, let's see. I didn't have anything else to talk about, and it's almost the end of the program here. Anybody have any last words of wisdom? I, oh. I have a call on, but how's Jack doing? How's Jack doing? Yeah, like health-wise. His body, I mean, he's gone through he's a lot lately, right? Nah, he's, he's getting better, much better. better. He's, getting yeah. better. He's, getting he's getting better. He's getting better. But we'll have to wait and see, though, too. Oh, also, hee-ho de puta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they call Jack all the time. Let him on. Do they? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He who de puta, de puta. Wayne, Wayne uh, vouches for Wayne that our no, no, no. or whatever. <laughs> no, no. no, no. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, everybody. It's so nice that you've all joined us tonight. Thank you very much, Charlie Wallace. Both of you. Uh, Jeff, both of you. Scott Boddicker, always great to have you here. Tony, not so much so. Uh, Brian, <laughs> thank you for joining us. And uh, listen, uh, Wayne, 
Yes. Feel free to call us anytime now that we know you're Wayne. Okay. Yeah, Unless but... there's somebody, now somebody else will call up tomorrow night saying they're Wayne. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm probably the only one who would yeah. say this out of this group, but I was kind of hoping Phil would be here tonight. Yeah. Uh, oh, Phil wait. will be here tomorrow night. Tomorrow? tomorrow? Okay. Tomorrow night. Anyway, well, thank he, was on, he was trying to call in earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to let him on. <laughs> anyway, everybody. Thank you. Give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Jack Bishop is next. You can call him at Skype on uh, uh, GabNet Live is the address there. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night right here. Yes, of course. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.